traditional meaning of development was mainly about the economic growth, development, organizations, so poverty, and underdeveloped as the consequence of the lack of capital, goods, and knowledge. So the International Development Organization approached the development problem by providing required capital and goods to the developing countries, which is understood as need-based approach. However, in some areas, there were no significant development and progress. Billions of people are still living under the poverty and without any access to basic services. And the gap between the rich and the poor became worse, both globally and nationally throughout these years. So they reevaluated their policies and approaches. And in the recent years, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Declaration on the Right to Development. A development shifted more to the human rights and equality, which is called right-based approach. So what is rights-based approach? Human rights-based approaches are about turning human rights from purely legal instrument into effective policies, practices, and practical realities. Unlike the other form of development practices, rights-based approach sees the lack of rights such as rights to education and health, which, which argue that inequality are the source of poverty that is different from the economic perspective on poverty. Human rights principles and standards provide guidance about what should be done to achieve freedom and dignity for all. Some of the principles that come with the new human rights framework for development are universality. Human rights are inalienable in that they cannot be taken away from someone or voluntarily given up. Second, non-discrimination and equality. Human rights apply to everyone, everywhere, and under any circumstances. Indivisibility. Rights are indivisible and should be taken in a holistic way. Interdependence and interrelatedness. All human rights are closely interrelated and interdependent and affect one another. Participation. Participation is an essential right. Everyone is entitled to freely fully contribute to, participate in, and enjoy political, economic, social, and cultural development of their communities. The rules of law. Rights must be protected by both strong legislation as well as an independent judicial system to ensure that the law is fair and is applied to all people. Accountability. The whole idea about right is that they must be delivered. In other words, there is an obligation to give these rights to their rights holders. To fully understand human rights-based approach, we need to look the two parties involved. On one side, we have the individual. This person is born free with a set of human rights. We call the individual a rights holder. On the other side, we have the state, responsible to protect and fulfill these freedoms and human rights. It's a legal obligation that the state takes on when signing international human rights agreements. We call the state a duty bearers. The state must take all necessary steps to guarantee their citizens' rights. So the state has the obligation to international human rights law. It includes the obligation to respect. It means refraining from interfering with the enjoyment of the right. The obligation to protect. It means to prevent other parties from interfering with the enjoyment of rights. And lastly, the obligation to fulfill. It means to take active steps to put in place laws, policies, institutions, and procedures, including the allocation of resources to enable people to enjoy their rights. Key to this is increasing gender equality and sustainable use of natural resources.